Hi, I'm Nick. Today I'm going to be talking about fingerprinting with you. In 200 BC, this is the earliest record of civilization using fingerprints for anything. And, and this was in China. They were using it for signing illegal documents. Fast forward a bit into the 1800s, now in 1870s, English doctor Henry Fold discovered fingerprints when observing workers leave prints in wet clay. He studied prints, noticing their uniqueness, which no one had noticed before. Later, Dr. Falls was able to prove a, sus a suspect innocent by comparing their fingerprints to the crime scene. He tried to introduce fingerprinting to Scotland Yard. They refused him at first because they already had a system. Th that system proved to be flawed later. The measurements that they used were not unique. In 1892, Francis Galton published a book about fingerprinting. He described what they are, how they are made, how to collect them, and how to analyze them. Mr. Galton stated that fingerprints do not change and are unique. In 1892, a suspect was positively identified as a murderer using fingerprints. In 1901, Mr. Henry created a fingerprint classification system, first adopted in England, then spread worldwide. In 1903, Scotland Yard was convinced of the, of the uniqueness of fingerprints and began using fingerprints. In 1911, fingerprints finally became accepted by the U.S. court as a reliable means of identification, and it, the next year, they prove, it proved a case. Criminal and civil identification. Criminal fingerprint identification. Part of a person's permanent record when arrested. As some criminals go by false aliases, fingerprinting can reveal their true identity and if they have a prior arrest record. Civil fingerprint identification. People enter in public service, such as the police or military. They take their prints to see if they have an, a criminal record. A passport merit. You, whenever you apply for a passport, they take your fingerprint. And every time you, say, fly from the U.S. to somewhere in Europe, whenever you get in Europe, they check your fingerprint to make sure you're the person on the passport. These sets of fingerprints are taken to determine whether the individual has any prior arrest records as well as to verify their identity at a later date. There are two types of fingerprinting system. The first is AIS, that's, for, that's the short version of it, and the other one is biometric. Right now, I will talk about AF, AFAS. It is a large-scale computerized system used by the law enforcement to identify to identify a person's fingerprints from millions of others. It could potentially take a long time for, it, for even hours just to get a single person's fingerprint in the huge database. The biggest uh, database with the most people is the FBI's with four, over 40 million. The large database has known and unknown prints. A new fingerprint is stored on the computer to those to the to those that already exist in the database. Search research can take a long time, as I said beforehand, because the database is just so humongous. But the other system is a biometric system. It is used to grant access. One-to-one -one identification that does not involve searching certain millions of the records like the AFIS does. Results, whether the fingerprint is a match is very quick. Some examples of this system being used are maybe to access a phone or computer. The two basic principles of supporting the science of fingerprints, individuality. An example of individuality is when twins are born. They have the same DNA, but not the same fingerprint. The odds of two people having the same fingerprint is one in 100 million. Now that's low.
That is why fingerprints are used as a unique identifier. The second one is that fingerprints are permanent. They will never change. The ridges on your fingers may grow, but the pattern will never change. You may wonder what it takes to positively identify a person using fingerprints. Well, well-trained experts use key points in patterns of ridges and compare them with the fingerprints on file. Some differences may be explained by an expert, but if there's a difference that cannot be explained, it's clear that the fingerprints do not match and a person is not positively identified. If you want to follow along with this, you'll, you're going to need tape, a piece of paper, and a pencil of any kind. First, you'll make a perimeter that one of your fingers can fit in. Make sure it's not too light, like this light, but more like this light. Now uh, you can at least get a little on it. And then make it big enough so your finger can fit in and can roll on. Now that we've made that, we're gonna put one of our fingers, I'm choosing my thumb, we're gonna roll it around in here, like side to side and up and down. That way I get all of my finger. Then we're gonna use the tape, big enough so it can fit on the finger that you put all the light on. And then we put it like this. Mine is a little bit big. And then we just push into it and make sure it's tight on it. And now that you know it's gotten on there, you take it off. Then you put it on the paper. And there's your fingerprint. This is an FBI fingerprinting card that you can get online, and I'm going to put all of my prints on it like I did right here. After I took my fingerprints, as you can see, they're ridges. They're called papery uh, ridges. They are, they are on your palms, fingers, soles, and toes. They are unique from each, everybody else's actually. There are three basic categories of fingerprint patterns, loops, swirls, and arches. As you can see, I have both loops here, here, and here, and arches here, which one, it, which you can see really easily. And also, it was here somewhere. No, this one, ah, sorry. And then this one. You see, it goes up, then down.